Right, welcome to the video folks. It is Friday the 15th of December and we are now officially at wall plate height. The plate is on, Terry and the crew uh, spent two days here this week uh, bedding the wall plate on. So we've got roof trusses coming on the Tuesday of next week. Uh, so all systems go really. Uh, the crane is booked. Uh, we're going to get a little uh, like trailer crane is what they're called and we're going to back it into here and we're going to lift the roof trusses straight up i've luckily managed to split the main roof trusses and the garage roof trusses into two deliveries uh, so we'll get the main house on we'll get fountain battened in uh, get it tiled and then we can drop the scaffolding adapt the garage and get that roof on as well so i'll give you a little tour around and then later on in the video i'm going to break down the costs from basically this, when we got planning to discharging the conditions all the way through to site clearance, joists, foundations, etc. And I'm going to give you a, give you the total that we spent to get it ready for the roof trusses to go on. Give you a bit of an idea of um, you know what we spent in what areas. I'll break it all down. I'll put it on screen. I'll give you the cost of everything, what it's actually cost us to get to this point not including the land purchase price but quite happy to discuss that let's have a quick tour and then we'll shoot back to the office and uh, i'll break down the figures to date so i'm obviously inside the plot uh, but you've you know you're you're familiar with it now the front bedroom and the, and the stairwell through into the ensuite through that door there so you can just see the trays just sort of on the left hand side because uh, that's where the garage abutment is but I, i'll take you a little tour through there nice big bedroom window there and another little bedroom window here uh, so you might think the bonding is a little bit incorrect but uh, like full blocks under the lintels where we can um, not that anal on it but uh, a full block uh, where we can get it uh, for instance three quarter here but it just keeps this bond at least there's some bond on there and it's a decent size for the lintel but wall plates on go for the bigger wall plate i prefer that uh, 100 mil stuff rather than the 65 mil uh, so yeah, we've, we've set the lintel across uh, the garage abutment. Let's have a quick look on the outside, shall we? The trays are finished now and it just worked nicely with the lintel. So then we've put a tray across the gable end anyway and there will be a few more trays just left to step up. Uh, probably just where that brick is and there'll be a tray going all the way down the gable end anyway. Uh, but other than that, brickwork straightforward. So there's no brickwork across any of the um, lintels it's all just sit soffit height sit straight on here uh got a bird box got a couple of bird boxes um a couple of back boxes that go on the front gable so this is a little gable end got a feature gable on the front uh, which i've ordered a date stone for hopefully to get that in time bit of a schoolboy error to be honest with you i missed that so this is going to be a little gable so i've agreed with terry i'm going to jump in with his guys next week and I'm going to get the gables done with him. He's kindly agreed to uh, let me join part of his gang. So I'm going to help uh, top it out, basically. I know I'm taking all the glory, but I want to at least have laid a few bricks physically on the house. I know I've done the foundations and block and beaming, but uh, the front gable, I thought, would be just right. Terry thinks it's a one-man job, so I'll be part of Terry's crew next week. So trust is Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Hoping to be here Thursday or Friday, get the gables done, and then we've got the roof tiler. Uh, hopefully the following week, although we have booked him technically for the for the week after, but we'll see. So anyway, let's get back to the office. Let's have a look at the spreadsheet and let's see how much it costs to get a house from basically a patch of grass ready for the roof to go on, uh, warts and all. All the figures are in there. I'll see you back at the office. Right, welcome back folks. So let's get into the nitty gritty, shall we? So let's talk about the cost that we've incurred so far from taking a patch of woodland all the way through to its current stage, which is basically ready to receive the roof trusses. Let's get into it. So the first thing we had to do uh, when we bought the site is that it had outline planning. So then we had to obtain full planning. So outline planning in essence means the council have said, yes, you can have a house here or houses depending on the site. And then full planning is just dealing with what's called reserve matters which is like your brick type your windows your, you know your roof tiles etc the finer details of the house so we have to instruct our architect to do that and deal with a couple of different um, conditions for for and behalf of the council 
We then have to have a couple of surveys done. So we have to have a topography survey done, which basically gives you the lie of the land, any existing buildings, the boundaries, etc. So the architect then knows what he's dealing with and can maximize the site and what you want to fit on there. Uh, we also had to have another survey to do with the trees, uh, you know, bats and birds, and when we can um, remove the trees and the best season to do it in because of nesting birds, etc. So we have to deal with that as well. And then also we need a drainage design as well so we can incorporate that into our work and drawing. So all of them pre-commencement conditions uh, with the work and drawings and all the rest of it and a couple of asset searches which is basically seeing where gas and electric and things like that are comes to a pretty penny of £9,585,000 which is quite a sum before you've even uh, broken ground cut a tree down etc so you're looking at nine and a half grand just to uh, get ready to start the site so quite a big outlay um, also included in that figure is the warranty from our architect as well so we have an architect's warranty you can instruct a separate warranty provider but we tie it all up in one so our architect does the um, work and drawings he also does the warranty and he instructs the local building control to do the key stage inspections and that's how we obtain our warranty so nine and a half grand before we can even get going so let's talk about the site clearance shall we so site clearance pretty straightforward really so we had to clear the trees instructed a friend of mine um, a local landscaper to remove the trees remove the tree stumps and completely clear the site and then once we had cleared the site we had to get a machine and a machine driver in uh, just to reduce dig it get rid of all the debris and all the all the rubbish on top of the ground to give us a nice clean site ready for when the engineer comes in and sets out the building so we had a couple of loads of muck away fortunately it wasn't too much and i got to keep some topsoil ready for my garden at the back of that as well so that comes so the site clearance come to four thousand six hundred and twenty eight pound so not not too bad really like i said there's a machine driver and a machine hire in that as well so all in all uh, not too bad so let's move on to the foundations then shall we so again we had the big machine and we had the machine driver on hand and then i managed to do this on a weekend uh, with the help of a friend um so I paid the ground worker uh, to come in with me on a Saturday and a Sunday and we also had a machine driver there um, and then we had some obviously some muck away as well. So the foundations um, and the concrete all come to eight and a half grand. So that's the machine driver, the muck away and the concrete uh, for the foundation. So the concrete for the foundations was... Uh, three and a half grand or just over three and a half grand i got it for 107 pound a cubic meter which is an incredible price to be perfectly honest with you so uh, foundations poured and then we've got to get on to the uh, block work foundation uh, masonry uh, the block and beam the drainage uh, the slurry in all that i've bought the block and beam from one supplier and i got the blocks for the block and beam uh, separately because the cost was significantly cheaper so i managed to get that at a fairly decent rate the block and beam is about 1500 quid and then i got the blocks from a company called breeden uh, and i got a lorry load and i got them for 72p a block originally uh, from the same supplier of the block and beam i was quoted one pound 32 so it's always good to have a shop around uh, especially if you're getting block and beam don't necessarily just take the block price that comes with the beams because they're trying to pull your pants down a little bit. So um, to get it to damp, so with the machine higher, so basically we had the block and beam, we had all the drainage, uh, we had some machine higher, we had to get some stone in for the scaffold mat, um, you know, a bit of sand and cement, etc., etc. Uh, the labour for the brickies to do um, the block work masonry in the foundation all come to just over eight grand. So it actually cost us about 16 and a half grand to get to damp. So I think that's an incredibly good price to be fair. And I know we've done a, a bit of work ourselves and I'm also doing a, a bit of a deal with a friend of mine who's a ground worker. So we're helping him out on his project and he's helping me out on my project and we're trying to you know, work together and save each other a, a few quid if we can. But 16 grand from the foundations, the muck away, all the way up to the block and beam complete in a splash course round is actually incredibly good and uh, a really good return. So that gives us to, um, that gets us to damp. So next stage I've broke down to joist. So basically to joist, pretty straightforward really, sand, cement, bricks, blocks. I got the subframes from Subframes UK. 
uh, they were 350 quid, relatively cheap. And then we got the labor for the brickies um, to, to get it to joist, etc. Um, the, the joist their sales was 1640 quid, which I think was pretty good. Um, and I got um, the two chippies that done the joist for me, 450 quid. So all in all to reach joist cost us six grand which again, I think is a pretty good return. Um, couldn't really have done it much more efficiently if I tried. Uh, so then we've got the cost to plate, uh, which is again, so the joists are on now, pretty much, pretty straightforward. Again, the subframes were already paid for, bit of sand cement, et cetera, et cetera. And then the brickies to get it to actual, put the wall plate on ready to receive the roof is another four and a half grand or just under four and a half grand. So then we have all the other little bits and pieces that are chucked in. So we've got the toilet higher, we've got the water, the universal tankers that I call in to fill up the water tank. Uh, we've got bricks, blocks, sand, cement, fed mix. We've got the mixer higher. Fortunately, that's our forklift. That's why we bought one because uh, it can just sit there and we are not incurring the cost. So all the other little bits and pieces, um, the labor for the scaffolding, uh, we've just spread that. I haven't spread that across each stage. I've just put a lump sum in at the moment, 3,200 quid. It's nowhere near that, but um, gives you a bit of an insight to how much the labor will cost us in terms of scaffolding. So the total cost to date, uh, to take this from a patch of woodland all the way to where it is now, which is ready to receive the roof trusses, is 51,399 pound, which I think is incredibly good and incredibly efficient. Bearing in mind 10 grand of that is actually uh, spent before we even touched the site and done any site clearance and some of that you know work and drawings warranties and stuff um, is part of the overall build cost so actual physical build cost in terms of actual physical work on the site construction work as I would call it 41 grand so it's a 1500 square foot building uh, which I think is a is a fair decent lump um, so we're at about 51 grand now that's not including the land purchase and I reckon I'm going to finish this for around about another 100 grand but what we would do is I'll do another video once we're in the dry and scaffolds down I will give you the full cost to date to get us to that stage and then we will go through the internals as and when they come in. So I've had quite a few quotations in already. Uh, the electrician I'm using uh, is the same guy from our last development, fantastic service, fantastic quality of work. And the plumber, he's done our last two or three. So externally, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we can't do any externals until the scaffold is down, but I'm super excited now. I can't wait to get that scaffold down. Roof trust is Tuesday, the 19th of September. So that's it for this episode. Uh, I will get it, the roof on, get it in the dry. I will give you another update on the total cost to date, and then we will separate that, and then we will look how much internally it's gonna cost us. And then at the end, I will give you a full breakdown of the land purchase costs, the finance, and the bill costs, and everything else, and all nitty gritty, and I will tell you how much it costs to build your own house. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you wanna check out the complete build, click on the playlist on the screen now. It will take you from site clearance all the way up to where we are now. So thanks for watching, please like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you next time out. Peace and love.